Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop and it's repair time again. Let's get right into it. This is a Rupert Neve Portico 5042 tape emulator. This is from a colleague uh, who's a little bit of a, a guitar freak, uh, likes to buy all the gear, all the expensive gear, and this is no different. This is... £1,350 worth, that's about US dollars worth of analog gear. And um, what this is, is a tape emulator. Back in the day, tape rather than digital sound reproduction used to have a nice rounded sort of feel to it, a bit compressed. And with digital, you don't necessarily get that, so they say. Um, so this unit here tries to emulate that tape feel, uh, the rounded and the uh, compression side of things. So it's a dual channel unit. Uh, he's been using it. Complained that when he powers it up, the lights in the front here, it's dual channel, like I said, just flicker. And that immediately, he told me that, I kind of thought what might possibly be wrong. So let's power it up and see what happens. So it comes with an AC adapter. Uh, let's see, it's 12 volts at 3 amps, a 36 watt unit. And it's just got the normal uh, plug on the back. So let me plug it in around the back here. There we go. And uh, there's a power switch on the back. If I can find it, there it is. And that it is on apparently, and yes, don't know if you can see that, but it is doing something. Oh, I'm not too sure about that. It's not really flickering. He said these sort of bar graphs here, these LED bar graphs were flickering. I'm not really seeing that. Let me turn it off and on again. Maybe it's with an input of a certain level that just flickers away when it's actually in use, but I don't have any uh, analog input into it at the moment. But certainly that A bus light seemed to flicker, and it's an oh ah, I just saw the saw the meter input meter tape. Ah, look at that! Just went out. Ah, yes, there's the flickering. So probably as well as the analog bar graphs, probably the lights behind all these push buttons there were flickering. Yep. Let's open it up. So when he said the lights are flickering, I immediately had my suspicions. I'm thinking um, capacitor issues. This is an all uh, analog unit. It doesn't have a processor in it apparently. According to the online documentation, so I've got a couple of screws either side there. Let's take them off. And that's the four at either sides. Well, the top's not really want to come off. I don't see any other screws. Uh, I think it must be something to do with the front panel, so. Yeah, it's got four screws in the front, so let me get them off. This is an expensive unit, so I'm going to take care uh, with the front panel, even to the level of watching these screw heads. I don't knurl them at all. There we go. Pull the knobs off. Oh, yes, there we go. Front panel off, we'll keep that safe. Oh. Ah, there we go. Let's take a look inside. Okay, here we are inside the unit. We've got the IO in the back, and we've got the DC power input 12 volt on the back with the power switch there. So down this side here we've got some input protection, a DC to DC converter that's uh, plus and minus 18 volts at 400 milliamps per rail by the looks of it. 
and the outputs here you've got some test pins there some inductors and cap caps here that'll be the across the output of the DC to DC converter we've got a bunch of op amps here kind of got a symmetrical design going on here that'll be for the two channels this unit is transformer isolated uh, for the uh, IO at the back there so we've got like I said the any 5534 op amps there and looks like we've got a couple of transistors here I suspect that's driving the uh, transformers there and we've got some more caps along here and a plug-in front panel board uh, with some more op amps there that'll be for the analog control over at the front there and oh look at that let me zoom in here Hopefully you can see that. That's what I was talking about, this flickering LEDs. Always a cat problem, isn't it? Uh, especially on an analog only design there. So, looks like that's the only cap that's bulging. So this looks like it's just gonna be a simple recap job. Um, but there are a lot of caps right enough, but this is an expensive unit. So I don't think uh, there's no expense spared. Uh, when it came to the design and uh, looking underneath this daughter board there there looks to be a lot more caps under there as well uh, yeah um, especially on the top here there's these smaller ones here not sure what size they are it's not easy to see but uh, I think what I'll do is I think I'll take the circuit board out and to tell you the truth I think I'm going to go ahead and replace all of these larger caps. I don't think I'm going to replace any of the smaller ones because I kind of presume they're going to be signal caps there and the bigger ones are really going to be across power supplies there. I can't see any other regulators so I'm just wondering whether that plus or minus 18 volt is dropped down to some other voltages there. Um, for the various parts of circuit there could be something underneath this daughter board here so let's uh, dig a bit deeper and see how we get on right that's the board pulled from its chassis and yeah it came apart pretty easily just a hell of a number of uh, screws to remove especially in the back panel around all these uh, XLRs in the back here uh, and that's it, it's a pretty neat board, uh, no modifications, uh, a little bit of flux residue around, it's obviously after the reflow process probably where they've um, put some of these uh, front panel controls on. I think I'll start looking at replacing some of these caps there, uh, looking at them now, 220 microfarad, 25 volt, quite a lot of them there, that's uh, six across there anyway, and uh, this one's here. Yep, yeah, that two there are the same size and hopefully down this end there might be something different across the DC input right enough. No, 228, 25 volt, perfect. So let's me have a look in the parts bin and see what I've got and uh, we'll look to replace them. I'll probably have to take off this uh, daughter board here because there are some under there as well. I'm a little bit concerned that there's only one that's bulging so I suspect some of the others have got problems as well. They're just not visibly showing. You know there's just a load under there as well but uh, not really sure what's going on there. I can maybe start to metering it out to see if uh, what ones are across the supplies that sort of thing there but we'll take a look at that. So I must confess, I'm a little bit like the Def Pom in terms of buying stuff. I just don't show it on camera very often, but uh, this is my stash of uh, electrolytic caps here, or aluminium caps. Uh, obviously the bigger ones here, I don't need to look at them, so let me put that to one side. And I'll take a look at my collection here, there's the smaller ones here. What I've got here is, these are old ones here. Um, yeah, these ones are probably 20, 20 odd years old, some of these ones here uh, from back in the day. These are sort of like newer ones that I've bought along the way. Most of them are from eBay and just in collections when I see them come up cheap. And these tend to be the higher quality ones here that's, you know, remain in their, their little bags there. Uh, some are some of the big ones, some are bigger. 
and uh, you know, just there. So let's take a look and see um, what I've got and I can use in the unit. Well, I've got a couple of candidates here. I've got some 220 microfarad, 25 volt, but they're a smaller diameter, which is fine. But what concerns me is the lead spacings might not be the same as the ones on the board itself. And I don't really want to bend these out to make it fit. It's just not going to look very good. And I've got these ones here, which appear to be the same package size, same diameter, but they're 330 microfarad, 25 volt. Now, if it's across the supply, I can probably get away with that. And this is probably a standard uh, um, uh, lead space in there you know it's a little bit more than than this one here so uh, I think I've probably got enough of these and probably enough of these so I'll uh, have a delve through this bin here pull out a whole load of them and uh, let's get desoldering on the actual board itself okay we'll start in this bottom corner here that's a desoldering gun move the solder from this one here that's that one out I like to do one at a time, I don't like to rip them all out. Just like to keep the tabs on uh, the direction, uh, orientation of them. So that's one of the new ones, that's one of the bigger ones, which just fits perfectly. So I'll just solder this one in place before I move on to the rest of them. Quite a large ground plane uh, on this design being analog, so it's actually quite hard to desolder some of them. But uh, there we go, that's the first one done, so I'll just crack on with the rest of them. Right, I've removed and replaced a handful already, mostly around this uh, DC input, and I've removed three of them from here. You can see the other channel, the three. Uh, here as well. Uh, not really sure um, what they're doing. They don't appear to be across the supply to the op amp so I suspect they're AC coupling the uh, input stages or something to these uh, op amps here so I'm not going to replace them with the 330 25 volt. I'm going to replace them the one with the uh, the 220 25 volt to keep them identical values to what was in there before. I don't want to change the sound any by putting in a, a different you know capacity uh, capacitor even the, on the voltage side of things. I just want to keep it the same. So it's the smaller package, and I have actually done the same with uh, this two here and they, they actually go in and look pretty neat on the circuit board it's not like the legs are splayed wide apart so it looks not too bad just to keep the the quality of this Richard Neve, uh, Rupert Neve, I keep on saying Richard Neve, this Rupert Neve unit going so uh, let's move on and get these three inserted now I thought it might be interesting at this stage to show you how I'm actually removing these caps with different methods of removing them, it really depends on the circuit board in question. But with a board like this, it's got a rather large ground plane. So using my desoldering gun here, I don't like using it and holding it on the board for extended periods. It's just spreading heat around. So what I actually like to do is, uh, I'll just uh, tin up capacitor here on the back. There's actually two that I'll just do now, just to put a bit of heat down the pin, just a little bit, and then I'll hold on to the capacitor with my left hand, and then what I, what I like to do is just alternate on the pins and just a little bit of heat down directly on the pin, and just pull the capacitor at one side, just a little bit, and then on the other one, back to that one, And eventually it will start rocking itself out of the board and that's keeping the heat very very local to the pin not pulling too tight on the capacitor on the underside you don't want to pull the through hole pad out the board and that's it there and that's it removed and then all I need to do after that is I do use a desoldering tool desoldering gun here just on the actual pad itself oh. 
There we go, and that's uh, four pads nice and clear already for the new caps. So I'll crack on. Okay, that's 14 capacitors all changed out. Just a wee bit of a recap here. The larger 330 microfarad ones I used on the DC input here. All the other ones I used from my stock of the 220-25 volt ones. Now I've still got some left, so I want to take a look now under this um, plug-in board here. Because I can see a whole load under there. I'll try and see uh, if I can get this board off and then we'll have to start replacing some of the caps under there as well. So let me just go away and try and get this top removed. Right, that's the board off now. Just have to take the front panel bracket off. I've got to find 15 more 220 microfarad, 25 volt caps, so I'm going to have to raid the parts bin again. Wow. Right, I've actually only got another four of the 220-25 volts, so I'm hesitant now to just replace the ones under the, that uh, plug-in board, so I thought I'd try a different approach. So in circuit, I'm going to measure the capacitors that are on the board. Uh, I'm not a fan of doing that in circuit, but we'll give it a bash. And uh, we'll just go down the line, we'll test the capacity and the ESR of the capacitor. So I know there's four here, so let's go into that one there. 186 microfarad, 0.67 ohm ESR. Yeah, that's probably okay in circuit. And I think if, as long as they all read round about the same, then we should be okay. Those eight anyway are reading the same. I can find that uh, damaged one. Well, the, the one that had bumped. Not that one. Not that one. Where is it? Not that one. There it is. Let's just test this one here. For giggles. Oh. 70 microfarad, 0.75 of an ohm. So yeah, the capacity certainly dropped there. Let me just try another one, one that didn't have a bump. Let me see what it's reading. Yeah, that's way back up 185.6. So that one's probably okay. You know, there's a good chance it was just the one capacitor that was gone. So, quite like the fact that all these caps are more or less all the same orientation, which helps a lot when you're troubleshooting. Oh, wait a minute, there's another, another couple there. Yeah, and this one here. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. I can't, you know, I'm, I'm happy enough at that, I think. I think I'll give the, the board a little bit of a clean and uh, put it back together. Or, well, I'll tell you what, I'll put power into it, put the daughter board back on and put power in and see if we're getting those flickering lights again. Okay, daughter board back on, metal frame back on the front, screwed in. I had to put that on because it kind of supports this daughter board a little bit. So let me just grab the DC lead here, power is off, let me just plug it in and put power on. Well, we've got some lights, let me just lift it up there so we can have a look. So far, it doesn't look like I'm getting any of that flickering that I was getting earlier. Ah, oh, we're not fixed yet. Just started flickering out of the blue again. Comes and goes. We've got a power supply problem still, I think. So I think. We'll need to start probing around the circuit board. I've got no schematic for this thing, to be fair, I haven't actually looked, but I think we'll start uh, probing around. It's stopped again. 
It's weird. Right, so this is what I've found so far. So I'm just checking the power supply and this is a DC, a DC over here. Quite warm actually. And it's sitting about on the negative rail, minus 18, but it's jumping about a bit. More than that in a minute. And the positive rails, plus 19.19, .19. it's jumping all over the place as well. And that's obviously supplying the power to the op amps. Yeah, if I go to pin 4 of this one here, you've got your minus 16, minus 17. So, oh, jeez, all, all over the place. I think that's the supply pin. So what I think is happening is this DC to DC is jumping all over the place and I think that's what's causing the failure of the circuit and uh, the lights to go all over the place as well. Um, I'm assuming that somewhere there might be a, a 5 volt regulator or something like that for those LEDs just to power that. You never know, they might come off the op amp supply as well. So up on this board here, there's the same minus 17. And is that a 3, 2 or a 3, 4? Oh, it should be pin 7. No, pin 8. Yeah. I can't quite see the number on that one there. there there's two op amps. One of them's got the... Uh, pin 7 supply, the other one's got a pin 8 supply, yeah that's it there, so 17 volts steady there, but you just have to watch it for a minute like if I go into the positive rail here, the output of the DC to DC on this test pin here and if I just watch the meter every now and then you'll see the lights flicker I haven't got it to flicker like it did, but I have seen that go up to like so 20 volts now I'm not sure if this DC to DC is a full regulated output or a, a semi regulated output because sometimes they're not fully regulated and uh, it's relying on external circuit, circuitry to uh, regulate it properly. Uh, I'll need to look up the spec for that there but I mean it's supposed to be plus or minus 18 and it is there at the moment but honestly you've seen it the supply see there's plus or minus 18 perfectly now Go into the negative supply one of these op amps. Minus 17. That's probably the other side of these inductors actually. Uh, which I can't get to at the moment. Yeah, I think the other side of these inductors on the op amp side it's uh, just slightly a bit of a volt drop going on there. So minus 18 perfectly. But I mean, I've seen that dancing all up at minus uh, 20 and plus 20 on another one. Just give it a little bit of a tap. It's quite warm that. Really quite warm. The circuit board, if I zoom in a little bit. Let me just get that in there. You can see that the, the power supply circuit sitting on its own ground plane. You can see that's a ground plane there, obviously for the analog side, and it's there's a little bit of a ground plane right along there, separated. I mean, it's joined obviously at uh, a specific point, but it's isolated to a certain extent so that any ripple on the ground there is not being influenced on to the rest of the circuit. But uh, apart from where it's controlled, and that's obviously at this point here. Um, so I think those four caps there must be on the output of the DC to DC. There we are, minus 19 now. That was minus 18 a minute ago. Yeah, I think I'll replace those caps. Then I'll come back. Right, I've changed the capacitors. Still jumping about. Now there's a couple of 2.6 ohm resistors. That's actually, this, they're in series, you've got the, the DC to DC converter output comes through the resistor before it goes into the inductors. And 
absolute interest. <laughs> Minus 21. I was looking up the spec of these DC to DC converters. It's meant to have a quite good uh, DC to DCs. It's like 1% if I read it correctly. Uh, line regulation. Um, <laughs> you know, we're way out of that. So, and I, I can hear it. You won't hear it, but I can hear the DC to DC converter making all sorts of noises. And that can be expected because you know there's coils and that inside there, a charge pump etc to generate the the negative voltages and then up the positive voltage. But uh, I don't think it's the rest of the circuit that's drawing too much current or anything like that. Because I mean those uh, 2.5 ohm resistors would be getting uh, uh, you know pretty warm. It, it looks like it gets worse as the temperature increase, increases and it does start to get warm um, but I mean they are designed to get warm um, because you know the data sheet for them actually shows a, a, an optional heat sink that you can put on the top so and it's not like the incoming supply is out of spec it's, you know uh, well pre-diode you're looking at 12 volts on the button really and it doesn't seem to vary much from that but certainly the DC to DC output all over the place on both rails so I'm tempted to take the DC to DC converter out and try it off circuit and the other thing I've got to watch out for I mean you're way up at like minus 21 and plus 20 volts these op amps, look up the spec for them, they're only rated, rated at plus or minus 20 volts, so therefore, you know, 40 volts across them, so we're at the limit for those uh, op amps, really. You know, minus 21, my god. I'm going to take that DC to DC converter out and uh, test it off circuit. Right, DC to DC converter removed from the board, and I've hooked up a couple of caps in the outputs. Generally, DC to DC converters like external caps don't perform too well, but I don't really know the spec of this one. I've never used these Motian ones before, so I don't know how they perform. And I've just hooked up an 11.2 volt DC supply to the input, coming straight from a bench power supply. 11.2 volt, because that's what I'm seeing on the actual device, uh, you know, after the diodes from the 12 volt input. And I've got my meter hooked up, so let me just uh, power up the bench multimeter. And it's drawing virtually nothing, which is offload. That's the positive side, and look at that, 23 volts, 20 volts, all over the place. 26 volts, jeez. And on the negative side, minus 19, 18. Wow. I think I'll give it a little bit of a load. I'll put a, a small load resistor across each rail and see, just see what happens. Give it a minimum load, because uh, sometimes these things don't like no load either. So let's try a minimum load. Right, a couple of resistors on the output. Actually, I looked up the data sheet there, and this uh, DC to DC converter is minimum load zero milliamp, so they do work. Zero, but uh, I'm giving it a load anyway, just uh, a few milliamps, and it's still all over the place. You know, I've got a couple of one k resistors there, kind of pushing it for them. They're getting warm but uh, it's given it a fair load for plus or minus 18 or well plus or minus 21 but still all over the place so if I'm honest I think this DC to DC converter is uh, knackered um, so I think I'll go and way up and price up a new one and uh, try that see normally they're pretty expensive so We'll have a look about and uh, maybe it's a standard package or maybe I can actually source one of these so let's go and try that now. Well I managed to source one uh, but I had to go back to the manufacturer and uh, via the British distributor managed to pick one up. I just couldn't find anything that was compatible. It's you know plus or minus 18 volts at 416 milliamps with the spec. 
you know, I can get something with the same pin out, but plus or minus 15. Really struggled with the plus or minus 18. So, bit the bullet and uh, bought a new one. It's just arrived. So, let's go and fit it to the main board and uh, let's see what happens. Okay, let's fit the new one. Should really check it's the same part number exactly, I suppose. I'll do that right now. VS-1218D15 9 to 18 volts, plus or minus 18 volts output, 416 milliamp, yeah, that's fine. Right, let's solder it in place. shorts looking good okay all ready for power up got my zero volts connected multimeter ready let's put power on oh, and I've got lights on at the front just off camera there so let's go on to the two test pins plus 18 volts there on the multimeter and looks to be rock steady the other one should be the minus 18 volts yep minus 18 volts and rock steady as well and if I just tip it up there's the lights in the front if you can see that and so far they're certainly not flickering but I'll give it a second because you know what happened last time let's put them off and on again that's looking good to me I'll just go on to the supply again minus 18 volts rock steady Plus 18 volts rock steady. And the DC to DC converter is getting warm. It's certainly not hot, it's, but it is warm. And you know, there is an optional heat sink that you can get for these DC to DCs, but uh, I think the designers of this unit were quite correct. It's only getting warm, so it doesn't really warrant um, the expense of fitting one. So it's looking good. So I'll box it all up and we'll give it another power up after that. Okay, and one final power up. There we go. Now I can't test it, well I could, but I'm not going to go to the bother of hooking up uh, a whole load of audio gear just to test this thing. Uh, I'll hand it back to my colleague and let him test it and uh, make sure it's all working okay. Uh, but I think that looks like that was the problem, the DC to DC converter. And a couple of the caps were probably uh, well past their sell by. So uh, there we go, another repair for the workshop. Thanks for watching.